In this video we're going to be looking at histamine and prostaglandins, which are two really simple chemical mediators. If you're following this in your AQA A2 textbook, that's the one by Glenn and Susan Toole, you can find this on page 156 to 157. So here's our objectives for this video. We're going to differentiate between the action of histamine and prostaglandin, and even though they're very similar, we're going to try. We're going to understand how chemical mediators result in an inflammatory response. And finally, we're going to explore the action of some different drugs on histamine and prostaglandin levels. And that bit is beyond the A2 specification. So keep that in mind if you happen to be writing an A2 level synoptic essay. So, chemical mediators, what are they? Well, they basically act on cells close by. They're produced in one cell and they cause a response in any nearby cells. If we have a look at the diagram on this slide, we can see that this is known as paracrine or paracrine signaling. As opposed to something like endocrine or endocrine signaling, which is where uh, the hormone, which is released from one cell, travels in the blood to a very distant receptor cell. So paracrine signaling is what this is. And histamine and prostaglandins, they're excellent examples that are involved in the body's inflammatory responses. Let's look at histamine first, I think. Yeah, histamine. So histamine is released from special white blood cells that are known as mast cells. And these mast cells, they degranulate, which means they release histamine in response to the presence of an allergen or sometimes injury. And the, the effect on the cells or the effect on the body of histamine is that blood vessels dilate and capillaries become more permeable. Now, really, it's the arterioles here that I'm talking about when I say blood vessels dilate. So this is a, a form of vasodilation. The effect that we see on the body is usually redness, swelling, and itching. So this diagram here shows an allergy scratch test where histamine is used as a positive control. So we're comparing against histamine to see what the, the allergy is like. So this person here um, has been scratched with pure histamine and also some different al possible allergens, as well as a negative control that could be something like distilled water. And the doctor can go along and compare the reactions each of the allergens compared to the positive and negative controls. So this person here is probably quite allergic to feathers, cats, dogs, horses, a little bit of allergy there for daisy pollen, grass pollen, birch pollen, not much at all for plain pollen, and there's certainly no allergy that I can discern to sheep's wool or alternaria, which is a kind of mould. So the drugs that are used to block the action of histamine is antihistamines or are antihistamines, and you've probably come across these if you suffer from hay fever or any kind of allergy at all. And the way they work is they compete for and block the receptor sites for histamine. And as a result of that, we have less histamine binding and therefore we have a less severe allergic reaction and less severe inflammatory response. Let's have a look at prostaglandins next. So very confusingly, this diagram isn't a prostaglandin. This is the enzyme cyclooxygenase that can produce some prostaglandins. And prostaglandins, they're synthesized or made at the site of tissue damage or infection. And we find them in cell membranes. And just like histamines, they cause blood vessels, that's arterioles, to dilate and capillaries to become more permeable. So prostaglandins also have a role in blood pressure and the sensation of pain. Some prostaglandins will increase blood pressure and make us feel pain, which is not the most pleasant of things. But some prostaglandins do work sort of antagonistically or in different ways. They work to in opposite ways. Um, the best example of this is blood clotting. So we've got thromboxane, which promotes clotting. And we have another prostaglandin called prostacyclin, which uh, reduces clotting. So aspirin and ibuprofen, these guys, they're common anti-inflammatory drugs and they help to reduce the amount of prostaglandins in our body. The way they do this is they block that enzyme, which I showed you on a couple of slides ago, um, that cyclooxygenase, which promotes prostaglandin synthesis. So with less activity of cyclooxygenase, there comes less prostaglandin synthesis, which therefore means we have less prostaglandins kicking around, and therefore less swelling. Et voila, anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, because of the effect on blood pressure that some prostaglandins have, the fact that it increases blood pressure, this is the reason why aspirin can be used to lower blood pressure. So aspirin blocks the enzyme which causes prostaglandin synthesis, therefore we have less prostaglandin levels, therefore we have less blood pressure. 
So to summarize the whole thing, well, chemicals can cause responses in close proximity cells. This is paracrine sig signaling. Histamine and prostaglandins both cause an inflammatory response. Histamine is released usually in response to allergens, but sometimes in response to injury. And prostaglandins, they're released in response to injury or infection. So, in case you want to do a little bit of further reading, on the left we have a great website that's called yourhormones.info and there's some information you can find there about prostaglandins. On the right hand side we have a great article from Britannica, that fantastic encyclopedia, about histamine. Thanks for watching, like, comment and subscribe.